I don't have share owners, by the way. I have no share owners. I have investors. I manage money. There are no share owners. So that quote is in, in, inaccurate, okay? It's totally inaccurate. But let me tell you what happened at that meeting, okay? It was at that meeting, and it was mid-May, and I asked officially for a board seat. Now, I have done that in the past, okay? Once or twice, asked for a board seat. And most often, I got one. But I never got an answer immediately at that meeting because I was sitting with only two directors. So normally I would have expected them to say, we'll poll the board, we'll, we'll call the meeting, the next meeting is in three weeks, we'll take it up then. Those two directors on their own said no. They didn't say, let's go out of the room, let's do anything, just no. I think that's bad governance in and of itself. And then what I did, I then offered to meet the entire board. Seven retirees said I'd like to meet them in whole or in part, and I would travel anywhere in the world to meet them. I waited, and then I would show them my white paper, because that's what we do. We share our white paper, typically with management and the board, in session, and then they can make their determination. As you know, they complained that I waited until after Labor Day to put out my white paper. I offered to meet with the board for the second half of May, all of June, all of July, and all of August. Asked many times. They gave me one new director, Ken Chenault, and I spoke to the head of governance on the phone, and she said, hello and goodbye. And that's that was the extent of the directors I met. That's why we pre presented the white paper when we did. But Mr. Taylor comes back and said there were 16 meetings between you and people at Proctor, which no. would indicate a lot of conversations the, beyond. 100%. It was with Taylor, John Moeller, and some of his global leadership team. Absolutely. But the only one in the room who could make a decision about my board seat was David Taylor, and he was one vote of 11. On this subject about your, the, the timeline and the meetings, and on this other seemingly not particularly important subject of how much money they're spending in fees to defend themselves, <laughs> there seems to be a difference of opinion, to put it, to put it lightly. P&G actually says that you're making stuff up. And that when you say they're spending $150 million on fees to defend themselves, as you did with Sarah and I last week, I think it was, I or did. two weeks ago, uh, that is completely not true. And they don't want somebody, and this is their quote to me, on the board who makes stuff up. Okay. They make stuff up by telling you that everything is peachy cream and everything is booby in the right direction. And understand, I like David Taylor. I look forward to working with David Taylor. And I'm not asking for David Taylor to step down. But I would ask David Taylor to be forthright. They put out their, David Taylor's record and say how wonderful things are. Earnings are down since 15. Sales, 3% growth cumulatively over his tenure. Traditional peers, 6% double. And 7% for the entire marketplace, okay? They're losing market share in all five segments. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.